All right, today's lesson, today's video is on the giant one adding fraction strategy. And so we're going to look at take a look at these two fractions here. The first one is one fifth plus two thirds. And what we're going to do with one fifth and two thirds is we are going to use the identity property of multiplication, which basically says I can multiply a fraction times one. Okay, we can multiply a fraction times one. So I'm going to make a big one here, and that big one will retain the identity of our fraction. All right, when we multiply a number times one, then we get the same exact number. So if we look at a common denominator here, five and three, if we look at denominators, we could say, well, three, six, nine, 12, and 15, we could say those. And those are multiples of three and five we start at 5, and then we say 5, 10, and 15. And I stop there for a reason, and that reason is 15 and 15 are common. They are common to both 5 and 3. So what that indicates is my new denominator has to be 15. That's the only way we can add these fractions together. So I have to figure out a way to multiply a fifth by one and get an equivalent fraction. But the denominator will be changed. And what I do is we, we know that five times three will give us 15. So since this is a one, we also have to put three in the top in the numerator. So this becomes, and it's kind of a conundrum, but in order to add fractions, you need to know how to multiply. So 1 times 3 is 3, and 5 times 3 is 15. So these are equivalent fractions here. Next, 2 thirds needs to be multiplied by a giant 1 so that the denominator changes to 15. And we know that 3 times 5 is 15. So since this is a 1, we put 5 in the numerator. And 2 times 5 is 10. And right away you see that we have portions that are the same size here, fifteenths and fifteenths. So 3 plus 10 is 13 fifteenths. So that's our answer. If we look at this problem here on the bottom, 2 thirds plus 1 half, 2 thirds and 1 half, how are we going to combine those, make them the same exact size pieces and put them together? Well, we could list some factors here. So for example, 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15, just like we did up here. These are multiples of 3. And then let's list some multiples of 2. We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. And we could keep going and going and going. But right away, we should see that the lowest number here, which they both share in common, is 6. So what that means is we can take 3 and 2 and rewrite them as denominators of 6. Again, we have to use the identity property multiplication, which means take a fraction and multiply it by 1 to retain the identity of the fraction. Retain the identity is 2 thirds can't change. It just has to be transformed a little bit. So we know that 3 times 2 is 6. So since that's the giant one, we put a 2 there. And what are we going to multiply 1 half by? Well, we have to multiply it by 1, so it retains its identity. And 2 times 3 is 6. So we multiply it by a giant 1. This has to be the same number over the same number. Then we can take and multiply the top, the numerators. 2 times 2 is 4. 1 times 3 is 3. So these are equivalents. Two thirds is the same as four six. It's just both numbers are written twice as large. And one half is equivalent to three six. Now we can add these up. Three plus four, four plus three is seven. The six remain the same. So seven six is our answer here.